In this video, we will be diving deeper into the Fusion 360's foundational concepts, focusing on three major areas. This includes Fusion 360's preferences, discussing the various workspaces, before spending the majority of the time talking about the timeline and the browser. Starting with the preferences, which can be found under your account name in the upper right-hand area of Fusion 360, we'll focus on a couple of notable options here. For new users, the most important options is found here, where you can adjust the default pan, zoom, and orbit shortcuts to align with the tools you are most familiar with. In the design subsection, you may also want to pay attention to the default design history, workspace, and previews technology can be found in the bottom most category. These are intended to give you early visibility to new, but possibly less stable technologies. With our new preferences set, let's now take a look at different workspaces. Workspaces should be used to address what part of the design process you're working on at that moment in time. I set my default workspace to modeling, as that is where I spend most of my time. But as designs near completion, creating things like renderings, animations, simulations, and CAM toolpaths can be accessed from the appropriate workspace. See the other Learn videos to learn more about these in depth. Finally, let's talk about the browser and the timeline, starting with the browser. In this case, the grinder vice design we're looking at has a lot going on, but when you first start a design, that will not be the case. Let's go ahead and look at a brand new design. In this inset window, you will see a new design being started, and by default, you'll see only three folders, named views, units, and origin. We'll talk more about those later, but what I want to show you is that as you add things like sketches, new folders will be added to the browser to contain those entities. In addition, when I turn said sketch into a body by extruding that shape, I now have a bodies folder. Now that's some simple organization Fusion 360 helps you out with. Now jumping back into the grinder vise, let's dig more into each section. At the top level of the browser is the overall design that we're working on, and just under that is the named views folder. This is where default views like top, front, right, and many more can be accessed. But in addition, custom views can be saved and accessed here as well. Below that is the current units for the design. To edit this, select the button to change active units, and a dialog box will open where you can modify these units. Contact between components has been enabled in this design, so there is a folder that contains the context as well. And next is the origin folder. This contains planes, axes, and an origin that can be used for sketching, or for other references. To temporarily see these, despite the origin folder being hidden, you can simply scroll over them and the item you select will be displayed in the graphics area. Or you can select the light bulb and it will stay visible. The light bulb here will hide or show the items contained in that folder, assuming they have not been hidden individually. When you create analyses such as a section view, the visibility of that item can be toggled on or off with this folder. Next, as joints are created, they will be located in this folder here. And finally, the rest of the items here are components. Each component can have its own folders, like origin, bodies, sketches, and so on. These can be expanded or collapsed as needed. But if not required, it's suggested to keep them in a collapsed state to make navigation of the browser easier. Now you can see that the browser is a container for a lot of the items created in Fusion 360 and controls the visibility of different objects. Now we're going to move to the bottom of the screen where the timeline is located. This is where each step taken to make the design is recorded and is accessible. The keys to the left can be used to roll back the history to the beginning, or you could step through in incremental steps. I'll scroll through the first four steps, and we can see how this complex design was made. Alternatively, you can hit the play button to automatically scroll through each step. This playback will stop after four steps, as that's where I left the rollback bar. Once it's dropped, the design will reflect what it looked like at that time, and again, I can move it back to the end. Additionally, features, locations can be adjusted in history to accomplish different effects. Let's use a similar example to highlight this. So you see that if I add a fillet feature to this shelled box, I get some undesirable geometry. However, had I added the fillet before the shell feature was added, that might look much better. To try this, I can click and drag on the fillet feature then drop it before the shell feature. This looks much better. If we move the rollback bar to before the shell feature, it becomes clear why moving the fillet fixed this. Anyway, back to the grinder vise. Near the rightmost end of the timeline, you'll find settings specific to it. 
Here you can turn off the design history. This will turn on direct modeling. Make sure to watch the Modeling Techniques Fusion 360 Foundational video for more information. Another option is to turn on the color swatch. This will code my features with colors, making it easier to determine which features are related to which components, which will correspond to the components in the browser. To make this easier to visualize, we can use our component color cycling toggle accessible from the Inspect dropdown or by hitting the M key. An easier way to find related features in the timeline is to activate the component of interest. This can be done from the right mouse menu or by using the toggle next to each component. When I activate the base, the timeline now shows only history related to that component. However, the joints you see at the end have a different color because those also are related to other components at the top level design. When I activate the next component, it looks as if there's no history. The reason for this is many of the features have been grouped together. I can expand this folder to gain access to the larger history, but these folders can help keep the timeline orderly. In addition, these folders can be deleted at a later time and the contents can be extracted to the top level. To group items together, they must be in sequence in the timeline. All that is needed is to select the items, then use the Create Group option. Now let's move back to the browser. It's worthy to note that at any time you can right mouse click on an item and find them in the window, which will zoom to the entity, or find the item in the timeline. Vice versa, you could find which features belong to the component by doing the same from the timeline. In addition, you can also individually suppress features from this menu. When I do this with the protractor, the single feature is suppressed, and now the full revolved geometry is present. Let's zoom to fit and look at another option. In this case, when I use the Find in Window option, the washer hinge is visible only by the highlighting. This part is buried deep within the design. Instead, I'll use the Isolate option, which does just like what it sounds. This enables me to only see this part, but it has no effect on the timeline. To see just the related features, I will still need to activate the washer hinge component. We hope this lesson helps you find your way through the timeline, browser, workspaces, and preferences. Now continue watching the Fusion 360 foundational concepts.